Okay, welcome to the class today. Uh, let's, I'm sorry, we had a minute or a few minutes behind schedule, but anyway, let's pray and then let's get started. And I'm sure the others will um, join the class. Um, Daryl, could you please lead us in prayer? I will start. Sure, Pastor. Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I can, can hear you. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful morning. Oh, Father God, thank you for adding one more wonderful uh, one more day in our lives, O oh Lord Jesus, as we gather, dear oh Lord Jesus, for the class. You be with us, you lead us and guide us, O oh Father God. I pray for uh, people those who joined and people those who haven't joined. Bring them, O oh Father God, on time, O oh Lord Jesus. Also pray for Pastor. And uh, you, uh, we come, you, uh, you submit this entire session into your hands, O oh Lord Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right, so we um, are talking about um, uh, in in the area of church and ministry administration. We are we've been talking about accounting, and I've just been sharing about some of the policies, practices, procedures that uh, uh, we use here at All People's Church uh, in 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 this whole area of managing finances, managing money, and it is a very important area. Uh, and um, so it has to be done well. It has to be handled with a lot of uh, uh, care and uh, a lot of, you know, being very uh, diligent about um, money, managing it. Uh, so today, hope, uh, I think, will be our last lecture in this, our third lecture and last one as we talk about um, managing finances. Um, I have put out um, the PDF that just has an outline of what we're going to cover. And I also shared a couple of uh, Excel sheets as sample documents that you could download and just have a look. I will also share it um, you know, on the call today. All right, so let me just go ahead and uh, share the PDF and we'll have a look here at, um, so we covered, you know, um, this is a quick review. We talked about a biblical perspective of money. We talked about software systems, how you keep accounts, um, you know, what the finance department will look like or looks like for us, what we're growing into. I emphasize the two-person rule and you know, the two people are involved in this whole process. And we covered these things uh, in the previous class on um, you know, when uh, we, how, you know, receiving offerings, how we be careful. And then we looked at the policies and procedures that uh, typically uh, we do in terms of, uh, you know, the whole accounting department and how we process uh, payments and so on. Now, I want to talk about some other aspects um, as part of the financial management uh, within the Christian church and ministry. Uh, we'll talk about budgeting, auditing, financial reports, what do you do with surplus funds, and uh, some some thoughts on fundraising for special projects. So let's see, uh, hopefully we'll cover these things today or maybe we will spill over to another class, and finish it off on Friday. So another important part of what we do with, with money, with managing money is budgeting, that is, you know, uh, you you have you kind of have to have some sort of an estimate uh, budget, you know, uh, meaning uh, this is how much we need to spend uh, for certain projects, certain areas of ministry, etc. Right. So you have an overall church budget, and then you have amounts that are specific to words, certain programs or ministry, areas of ministries. And then there is also, you know, amounts that you want to allocate for special, as special offerings and so on. Now, I have to admit that, uh, I will share with you a spreadsheet, but I have to admit that these last two years have been very different, right? So that is 2021, this current year and 2020 that means you know th th this whole this whole budgeting thing <laughs> uh just just was disrupted 
because uh, we just couldn't do you know the the, the usual or the regular um, ministries and things that we would normally do uh, when things that we you know as a church so we we couldn't do all of those things and instead we had to take on different things you know uh, and all of this was not um what to say it wasn't pre-planned it wasn't something we thought of before and so these were just things that came up uh, you know and i will mention you know so well, let me just mention so for example in in uh, 2020 uh, uh, right now, as soon as the you know the, the we had to shut down and uh, and uh, the city and the nation and many countries went into lockdown uh, one of the first things we did was to set up uh, we had a generosity fund which was money that we would keep aside to help people in the church inside the church, as part of apc to help them uh financially when this was usually used for you know uh, education paying of people's fees and all that but uh, immediately we had to kind of you know make that generosity fund a bigger thing and we had to have a proper way to screen people so that became very important last year and then in a lot of other things programs ministries were shut down we couldn't do it and then uh, so that that was something new it wasn't planned it wasn't there we had a, we had it in a small way but that became very important because we had to help people and then uh, we, this year, we had a COVID relief project. So that was again, not planned. It was something very big uh, to help pastors and leaders. You know. So uh, what I'm going to show you is what we would do under normal scenarios, okay? Uh, uh, these two years, 2020, 2021 has been very different. So these, whatever I'm showing you did not happen these two years, okay? But this was say um, prior to that. So here's your budget. All right. So how do we do our budgeting? And I've I've put this sheet out there, and this is you know these, you don't have to worry about the numbers. You just have to get the idea of how we do it. So what we do is we typically typically look at okay there are various various areas. So administrative. Uh, these are for various outreach churches. These are various mission things. You know we we do we go uh, we have mission conferences and so on. Uh, these are expenses for our different church locations. These are for the different ministry areas. Uh, these are for our publications. Um, and these are for uh, special events and things that happen here in in Bangalore, right? Okay, so here's so basically this this column here uh, is listing the normal things that go on, you know, uh, in in the church through the ministry now some of these things we have discontinued like for example the tv ministry we stopped in december 2019 because we felt people are moving away from just television and consuming content content online uh, through the video distribution channels or platforms so we discontinued that so it's no longer there so this is an old spreadsheet right so don't uh, don't worry about the numbers but just get the idea Right. So what we have done is we've listed all the areas of ministries that are going on, and this will dif differ from church to church and ministry to ministry. Then we have the previous years, the previous financial years, what we have spent. So we usually take the last three years so we can have a trend on this. Now, if something has discontinued, yeah, it's discontinued, but this is it, right? So what we spent. And then here's your average. Okay, so uh, based on these three, here's the average that we've been spending on these areas of ministry. Uh, what if we do a 5% increase? So if there's a 5% increase or a 10% increase, what should we, what should be the amount that we should look at, right? So we look at, uh, uh, say, a 10% increase that, okay, this year, you know, whatever the coming year, uh, you know, we may spend 10% more on that particular area of ministry. So you can do a projection, 10% uh, or 5% or a 10% increase for that area of ministry. And you will know that, okay, that's the amount that's been spent, or is, sorry, is, is, uh, is needed at 10% increase for that particular area.
So what you do is, so this is something you work internally, right? So your accounting department, with the help of your accounting department, you can do it. They will show you this, they'll give you the spreadsheet, you'll arrive at these numbers. So you know that based on the last three years, here's your average. And if you do a 10% increase, uh, this is how much money you should budget for that particular program or area of ministry. Right? So you have an idea. So as you're preparing for that event in the new calendar, a new financial year, uh, as people, you know, the people are planning and all that, you say you can give them, look, uh, keep the expenses for that particular program within this range right so you would give them the five to ten percent range right so within five here between here to here it also depends on you know how you're planning to grow in that particular area right so but you have these numbers in front of you uh, and you know what to tell the team that's that's in that area you know working so keep your expenses within this range uh, plan all that you're doing sometimes you may want to grow much more so you may give a 20 percent increase or a 30 percent whatever the you know the growth is that you're expecting for that particular area sometimes um, it may not be very big growth so you can keep it within five percent ten percent increase for that particular area and of course it also depends on the money coming in to the charts and i will show you we track that as well i'll show that to you so if you want to go into you know uh, more details you can look at you know uh, you know where exactly money was spent you know um, so if we did a, so this in the youth you know we did a youth conference in down this is happening for the teens and 20s meeting where is the money going you know uh, for in this particular area of ministry uh, how much was spent you know, in in that the next calendar, year, next decade, next financial year, and then the following financial year for youth. So um, you get a view of uh, okay, where is money going uh, internally for these various programs? Okay, weekend schools, other programs, and so on. So that's also helpful. Uh, and then you could look at it for television ministry. Like um, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, we've we've stopped our television ministry, but uh, you know you, you can actually look at it, and then uh, for each year you see, okay, this is how much we've spent, uh, so we can you know cut down on things and so on. But eventually we decided in 2019 to stop TV ministry because uh, people were moving uh, into other things to look at uh, videos and so on, but. This is something that, uh, uh, you know, uh, as, a ch uh, as a church, this is how you can do your budgeting. One way is, you know, you look at the trend and then you project saying, this is how much we will spend. Now, there are, of course, other, other things that impact your budget, which is your income. So if your income has dropped, for whatever reason, then you would, instead of doing a 5% increase, you may say, you know, we have to do a 20% decrease. Uh, we want to spend less in these areas, okay? Uh, so it really, uh, you, you, you will have to make that call based on the knowledge of what your income is. Okay, and I will share with you a little later on how you will know that income. So this is about budgeting, right? Now, the other thing we do, so this is at overall church budget. This is, and we also looked at event and programs that are specific. The also, the other thing that we do is we have special offering allocation. That means uh, we say that, or what we have been doing, this was before, uh, uh, till the end of 2019, 2020, 2021, things changed. But what we used to do uh, before is we said, okay, you know, every year we want to give uh, five lakhs, that is about 500,000 Indian rupees. Uh, we would give it away as, our, that was our missions budget. That means this amount is going to go to other ministries to, to just support other missions work in India. It doesn't have, they don't have to do anything with APC. It's just a gift that we give to help other missionary mission organizations. So uh, over the course of the year, you know, and then we usually work through people that we know whose ministries we know and 
we are comfortable with we are you know we, we, we don't want the money to be misused so usually it's uh main mission organizations and mission mission leaders that we know uh, and we know their ministry and you know so then we uh, we distribute this up to five lakhs sometimes six lakhs we you know we may give one mission organization two two lakhs which is two hundred thousand uh, we may give another mission organization fifty thousand we may give another mission organization a hundred thousand whatever so we distribute it like that so this is just just money to bless other uh, things so we keep that aside so that's how so we have that budgeted amount then out of that we keep giving through the course of the year and so we know that okay we've given totally so much right now the other thing is auditing the audit simply means to keep a check on what is happening uh, within your within your financial management um, i may have shared a little bit about this earlier but uh, what we do is we have weekly audits monthly audit uh, we have a semi-annual audit and then we have annual audit reports so weekly audit is basically on a weekly basis um, you know, the, every week there are a lot of transactions happening, money coming in, money going out. Um, on a weekly basis, there's um, an external accountant coming in who looks at everything that has happened the past week. Uh, he looks at all the, you know, all the money that has come in, money that has gone out. What has this money gone out for? Do we have the bills for it? Do we have, uh, you know, the proper uh invoices that have been sent in by the vendors against which amounts have been paid so on a, and then these are entered into the software system so this happens every week on a weekly basis so, so you know we have a short accounting you know uh, a window there so if anything is wrong you know they can check and say get me this these bills are not there these bills have to be there so on. then so that happens on a weekly basis they get into the system then we do a full monthly audit. So at the end of the month, again, uh, you know, so we have an internal accountant. We also have an external accountant coming. So the external accountant will sit and will look at the whole month's thing. Okay, so you've got the, all the transactions for the month. So can all these transactions be accounted for? You know, the, so much money has come in, so much money has gone out. These are all the bills. Is everything tallying? Right now, because the work has been done on a weekly basis, the monthly audit is also, you know, can be done a little faster because on a weekly basis, everything has been checked. But on a monthly, uh, monthly basis, everything is checked. And at the end of the month, there will be reports that are sent and I will show you the report. So every month, the accountant will send two reports to me. Uh, and of course, to our accountants, the external external accountant will send these reports. That means he has checked, he has summarized it, and then he's sending it back to us, like saying, look, your accounts are in proper order. Our internal accountant is there, but the audit is being done by an external accountant. And so he sends these reports every month. So I will share that with you. And then uh, twice a year, we have another independent auditor. So. We have our internal accountant, we have our accounting firm, we have a third independent auditor accounting that come. Uh, people who come, these people will do every six months. Okay. Now, uh, I have to acknowledge that last year we couldn't do it, uh, or this past financial year, we couldn't do it uh, at the usual six month period. Uh, you know, the, there were a lot of these problems, COVID related and people not available or so, so many things. So we are actually doing it at nine months and 12 months uh, instead of the six month and 12 month period. But otherwise, normally what happens is it happens every six month, six and 12, right? uh, a semi-annual audit. That means every six months, everything is checked once again by and now we actually have more than one person like a team of people looking at everything uh all the and uh, you know, everything that's been done the last six months checking all the accounts and they say okay everything is there if there's any corrections you know what is missing so on and at the end of the 12 months they will generate a detailed annual audited report 
right so this is the report has all the details everything so it's usually a little thick piece of book uh, uh, document many pages filed and so it's all checked now uh, this is an annual audited report uh, so on so that means this is done again by an independent third auditing firm that's auditing checking all the accounts saying yeah everything is in order so on okay so we are weekly monthly six months and 12 months reports uh, things that are being done internally things that are being done by external people so that we keep everything in check right so that's how uh, the checks happen as far as the finances are concerned and then uh, so let me talk about reports now so what happens is uh, we have our monthly reports and we have an annual report so monthly every month there are two spreadsheets that are sent to me by the uh, external accountant to yeah so he does he does the work and he will send a spreadsheet now i just deleted the numbers so the numbers are not there but this is what it looks like okay uh, there is a there is a uh, uh, an income expense statement all right that means here's all the income all right this is money that's coming in right uh, and uh, uh, so he will you know list all the amounts here now this this code relief fund is uh, is not normal that means it just happened this year but this won't be there normally uh, it'll just be whatever's come you know money has come in this is all our expenses uh you know uh, so you can see these are the ledger heads subheadings uh we track these things okay so he all oh, you'll have all the amounts here then this is the amount that is in the bank balance so these are the bank accounts these are the amounts um, this will be the amounts that are there and then you know what we do with our surplus funds is we put it in fixed deposits and i will talk about that a little later but we you know we'll say okay these are all our fixed deposits these are numbers um, so we know what is in fixed deposit how much is there and then these are uh, again uh, these are things that are very specific due to covid right so this part from here to here is very specific for COVID. Like we, like I said, um, you know, we ran this code relief project. So we, this is a quick summary of what came in, what went out. And this is the generosity fund. That means this was money given to people within APC who maybe lost their job during COVID. Um, and they were temporarily without pay. Sometimes some people were part of companies that didn't pay, so they didn't have income. So we helped them. Uh, a lot of educational institutions closed, so people who were teaching uh, didn't get their normal, you know, their normal pay. So a lot of things like that. So generosity fund was mainly for people within church. Then this is our missions contribution. Like I said, about five lakhs. What do we do? Sometimes this goes more than that amount. So how is that meant? so this spreadsheet comes every month end of every month um, let me say this by the seventh of the fall the new month this will come to me for the previous month right this is the income this is called the in income expense statement so you know what's income what's expense then there's also what is called the total income sheet where where we track uh, so we, we go back from 2016. Uh, I've deleted all the numbers, but usually all the numbers are there. Uh, um, so from 2016, we know month by month, right? So January, February, March, April, till December. every month we know this was the income, this was the expense, this is the difference. What's the total income, total expense for 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. So this you know it, it, it's it's a it's a it's a view that uh, you know we can look at and we know okay how are we doing as a church you know so i i will look at this very quickly see how we are doing right so 2021 how's 2021 compared to previous years 
uh, this month. Now, if something is wrong, uh, we have to ask the question, why? You know, so this immediately gives us a good assessment on the financial side of what is happening with the church. You know, uh, what we will, you know, you can, you know, and you can also see trends, you know, okay, month of April and May, uh, you know, is there an increase or a decrease of funds? Okay, it has been happening every year. That's why there's a decrease. Okay, we understand. So those kinds of things you can see in terms of what is happening. Right, uh, but it's important to keep an eye on this so that you know, okay, this is what's happening, <coughs> and uh, uh, and and you know, and what we have seen here at APC is every year we've been growing, right? So we can always look back at 2016 and say, okay, 2017 was better than 2016, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. So we are growing. So you know uh, what was amazing was um i think okay last year 2021 for example and i'm just saying this just just to testify not to boast but you know in 2020 after the co after we had this lockdown um our trustees were you know meaning the people who are legally responsible for apc were concerned like okay you know what happened i mean i, I you know has the money dropped because you know people covid and we didn't have services and everything and what was interesting was uh, last year 2020 uh, i think it was the month of august if i remember correctly we had the highest ever income that one month on a monthly basis so in the middle of covid and this was not we were not doing any special fundraising or anything right? Uh, we has the highest ever income uh, in the middle of COVID season uh, in that month ever, you know, from the time we started APC. So that was like, wow, that in, in in the middle of a crisis, God is, you know, we have more income than before. And then definitely 2021, we, you know, in January of 2021, we, we decided to give money away to churches within Bangalore. So we did that. We helped many churches in our city we, we kept aside 15 lakhs so we said from the surplus of 2020 we are going to bless churches so in january 2020 uh, we kept aside up to 15 lakhs uh, you know uh, so that'll be uh, oh we have 15 yeah 15 lakhs um uh, rupees and to give away to churches and we invited churches to send in their information and we screened them and then we gave uh yeah we gave um i think finally we gave away around uh, i think it was seven lakhs or eight lakhs something like that you know because we had to screen the churches and those with gen genuine needs who had applied if we gave so even though we kept aside 15 we actually gave less than that because uh, those were the churches that kind of went qualified or went through our screening process. So we helped churches uh, in Bangalore. Then later on this year, during May, uh, May, June, July is when we did the COVID relief project where that was the biggest project ever in the life of APC. And so uh, that was, again, a uh, you know, wonderful thing. So. Basically, this is a spreadsheet that comes. This is the main thing. So I, I, I quickly look at this, see how things are. And a lot of these uh, deposits here are money that is for part of our building project. You know, So we have a separate account for building projects. So um, uh, these deposits are basically, uh, most of these are building project related because we have been setting money aside for the building, buying the land and uh, and, and getting ready for it. So that's why this money is in fixed deposit. Another uh, report that comes uh, every, every month is the receipts and payments. So this is like your your uh, your ledger it shows you, okay, these are all the money received, uh, uh, where the money is uh, uh, coming in, and these are all the payments. This is just another view of uh, money but then it tells you exactly where the money went you know, where did we pay we have uh, consultants 
professional fees, salaries, the taxes that were paid, and uh, this is what we have with us. And these are all our expenses, okay? So this is also a, a view of our income ex expense receipts and payments, and we know what is the balance here, okay? So these are two reports that come in every month um, that uh, we look at, and then we also have reports that are project based. Uh, that um, that oh, or let me say that are yeah, project or event based, right? So every time we have an event or we're doing a project, as soon as the event is over, I will get a report, right? That means example. Suppose we do a conference. At the end of the conference, we have a report. Here's here's all. So before we do the conference, there is a budget. I mean, that means the person going to do it says, here's how the money is going to be spent or whatever the project is. This is how money is going to be spent. We approve that. At the end of it, we get the actual. So before the project or the conference happens, the budget is based on, you know, we've done the budgeting here. So we tell them, look, you can only spend so much. Example, two lakhs. So give us a budget, give us a um, a, a proposed expenditure based on two lakhs. So they'll give us the initial budget, we approve it. At the end, after the conference is over, okay, the report. The report says this ex what was actually spent. So those reports happen based on every conference, every project that happens. At the end of a conference, we'll get it. So those things keep happening throughout the year as and when uh, uh, events and conferences happen so we know what is being spent and then uh, the annual report goes on our website so for those of you who are familiar um, let me uh, go here right so if you go to apcw.org slash financials um, we put out our reports here so you know uh, till the last financial year from the very first year till the last financial year our annual reports are available online and we tell people you know you're welcome to come ask questions etc those who are members and others right so all our annual reports are available for people to go and see uh, what is happening right so those are the reports so there are monthly reports, there are project-based or conference-based reports, and there are these annual reports, okay? Um, a few other things I just want to talk about is, you know, when, if, when you have surplus funds, uh, what, um, what you do with that money is very important. So uh, what we are allowed to do here is to put it in fixed deposits. Um, so our APC as a trust does not permit us to put money into you know anything else. Uh, like you can't put it into the stock market or you can't put it into, a, you know. Now you can buy land and buildings, but you can't invest that money outside in other things. So we just keep it in fixed deposits. What we would advise is do not use church money to invest in private businesses and all that. You cannot use, you know, this is, in, in some way, it's public money. It's money that has come in from people uh, who have given to the church. Uh, so you can't go and put it into private businesses. And all. So you have to be very careful. Sometimes churches have done that and they've uh, lost money. Basically, you've lost the money of, uh, uh, you know, what was given for the work of the ministry. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's really painful. So do not use church money for private business things, right? And uh, lastly, uh, I do want to say, you know, uh, fundraising, you have to be very careful, especially for special projects. Uh, what we do is basically you just share the project with people, say, hey, we are doing this. If you want to give, you give, right? So example, when we had to do COVID relief, uh, we sent a single email to people saying, look, this is what we're planning to do. There are so many pastors who, who need help. Uh, if you'd like to give, you give. And so people gave, right? Um, now, one, one important thing that we are very careful about is that we do not want any competition between uh, ministries within the church uh, trying to compete for money. So 
as a policy, we do not let individual ministries in the church raise money directly. Uh, only for, we do this for special projects, but not for individual ministries. All the money goes into the general fund, and from there, they're allocated to individual ministries. Otherwise, what will happen is uh, they have become competition between ministries. Who can pull more money from the people for their own ministry? And we don't want that, right? So we don't let any of the ministries <clears throat> raise money on their own for their work, no. We present the need, people give to the general fund, then it goes. If people want to give to a designated ministry, like maybe publications, maybe missions, maybe outreach churches, maybe a certain conference, okay, they can give it, but it's because they want to give and not because we are you know, pulling money from them for those ministries. We just let people know, look, if you want to give, you want to designate your giving, you're welcome to do that, but we don't let you know different ministries do presentations and urge people to give, and then it becomes a sense of competition between ministries. So we intentionally have stayed away from that. Some churches may do it differently. Some churches may permit ministries to raise funds and all that. Okay, that's okay for them. But for us, we have stayed away from that. We just, money comes in the general fund, then we allocate to different ministries and let the ministries grow based on what is available. The last thing is that, um, you know, uh, as an organization, you have to file whatever is required by the government. So every month we have to pay our professional tax for all our staff. Uh, and then um, we, all, we also have to uh, pay what is called as uh, employee provident fund, which is like a retirement fund. So we have to pay for all our staff based on, you know, whatever the regulations are. Uh, we have to calculate and pay that and we have to file uh, all our uh, documents with the tax department now as a church we don't pay tax but we do have to file our returns we still we still have to submit all our uh, documents every year so these are you know required by the government so every month these payments are made uh, to the government uh, every year the papers are filed with the government. So the government knows that, okay, this organization is uh, managing its finances well, they are being responsible, and uh, they are making the payments that you're supposed to make uh, as required by law, right? So this kind of just gives us an overview of, uh, you know, the other other pieces of, uh, uh, managing the finances that go you know, off the church uh, as an organization. And uh, I've shared some of these documents with you. It's good to know these things. Uh, although the work is being done by the accountant and the people who are doing the accounting, uh, it's good to know so that as a leader, as a pastor, uh, you keep an eye on these things. Uh, a lot of decisions you make will be based on you know the money that's there and how you manage it uh, what what projects you do what projects you sh should stop uh, you know those are decisions and one part of it of course is the money uh, of course ultimately god leads us but god also wants us to be good stewards of the people and resources that he has placed in our hands okay all right so any questions uh, you would like to ask here yeah, as far as the accounting part of the church and the ministry. Any questions? No, Pastor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone? Okay, everyone's fine. All right. Okay. So we bring this to a close. I um, We finished everything that I wanted to share here on the accounting side, just to give you an idea of, uh, you know, what can be done. And uh, let's close in prayer and we, we will dismiss after that. Um, Kanan, is your audio okay? I wasn't sure.
Claudius. All right, Prince, why don't you pray and dismiss us, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, let's take come. Lord, I pray that we help us to learn this, all the things, Lord. Thank you for that. Our Holy Spirit will continuously minister to us, Lord. Mm. And I also pray for each of the students and the pastors. Uh, all things that are very important to us, this accounting things and use in our ministry as we start. Thank you, Lord. I submit the rest of the day in your hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. God bless. We'll see you again on Friday. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Prime. Thank you, Conan. God bless you. Bye.